In today's note, we are going to look at determining the equation of a line using the formal method. So this formal method focuses very heavily on the algebraic way to solve things. Um, any of the methods that we talked about in the past, whether it's using the table of values, um, the change in y and the change in x, um, looking at graphs, all those methods are um, perfectly fine options. This is just the very formal way of doing it. So anytime you're given two points, this is definitely going to work all the time. Um, the other ones, it may depend on the table of val or the table of values that you're given. You may have to do some algebra like we talked about in the last lesson. Um, if you're given um, a graph, again, you may have to incorporate this or incorporate the table of values um, to work your way back to find constants or the slope. Um, but this will cover everything in an algebraic way. So the first thing we want to do um, is print off the note or go back and get the note if you haven't done so already. Um, basically we're going to go walk through one example in a step-by-step -step process looking at these two points on a line and then we'll look at incorporating those steps into a couple more examples. So. Again, if you haven't gotten the note already, please go and get the note so that you can follow along and fill it in as you go. But the example, or the first example that we're gonna look at is basically determine the equation of the line that passes through the points one negative five and 11, 15. One thing to note, if we're not quite sure or have forgotten, remember a point is always given as an X and a Y coordinate, right? Just make sure we remember that um, because that is going to be useful going forward. So the first step that we want to do is we want to determine the slope. Now we've done this many times and we've done this in a couple of different ways. Um, the first way we've really seen it is putting it into a table of values. So if we have our x and our y we're given our two points. Remember, we already talked about what those points were. X value is first, Y was second. So we put them into a table. We have one, negative five, and we have 11 and 15. We then talked about coming up with the change in Y and the change in X. And the reason again that we're doing this is because if we're trying to find the equation, we are looking for Y equals MX plus B. And M or slope is the first part of that. So going through, and doing that, again, there's many different ways, or there's a couple different ways. We've talked about the change in Y over the change in X. And again, typically we've done that from seeing how do the two points change, right? Our delta Y and our delta X. The X one's an easy one to see. We can see that we're going up by 10. The Y may be a little bit difficult, Right, because we're starting at a negative, we're going to a positive, we may not be able to figure that out. One thing we can do though, is we can take the bottom number and subtract the top to figure out what we get. And we can do the same thing on the other side if we're not quite sure. So this idea of taking the bottom number, subtracting the top number, comes into play with our algebraic formula for slope down here. We've usually seen the change in y over the change in x, but this method is also a viable option. So we're gonna work at it with this way because this is the formal way to do it. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and these little subscripts here, the two and the one, those are referring to the x and the y values for different points. The x2 and the y2 refer to a, a, the second point, or if we look at our table, we're going to call the second point the 11, 15, our point 2, and our first one, the 1 and negative 5, is our point 1. So what we do then is we take the y2 value, or the y value of the second point, 15, minus the y value of the first point, negative five, and that will tell us our change in y. 
And again, it's basically what we were doing before, except now we've put it into an algebraic form. We can do the same thing with the bottom. The x2, or the x value of the second point was 11, minus one, the y value, or the x value of our first point. Now, regardless of how we fill this table out, if we were to do this the other way, if say we had our points put in the table the other way, because we've seen examples where they may not necessarily be in order, the idea is still going to be the same. Regardless of how our points are laid out, we're still going to get the same idea or same change in y and same change in x in the end. Okay, so from 15 to negative 5, so if I did negative 5 minus 15, and if I did 1 minus 11, I would get the same idea in the end, except maybe my signs are reversed, but when I cancel them out, everything will still work out in the end. So if I simplify this, I get 20 over 10, which equals 2. So therefore, my m, or my slope, is equal to 2. So that's the first step. And again, if we wanted to just double check in the second one, right, if we had negative 5 minus 15 over 1 minus 11, this works out to negative 20 over negative 10, which also equals 2. So either way, your points are laid out. You should still get the same slope in the end following this algebraic method, or again, doing the change in y over the change in x. So after our first step of finding the slope, we need to find the y or the y intercept or the b value. Just as a reminder from the last one, our slope is equal to 2 because that is going to be useful or required for this step. So to determine the y intercept, we use the slope m that we just calculated, which equaled 2, and one of the points as x and y. We substitute all those values into the general equation y equals mx plus b, and then we solve for b. So this is something similar to what we did in the previous lesson. So we have our general formula y equals mx plus b. We can use any one of these two points up here, the 1, negative 5, and the 11, 15. Either point is fine because they're both part of the line. So it doesn't matter which one you use, um, you'll get the same b value, or you should get the same b value in the end. I'm going to use the second point, 11, 15, just to ensure, just because I like dealing with positive numbers. Again, remember the points, or the points are just coordinates are x and a y value. x is first, y is second. So what we're going to do is we're going to sub into the equation. and solve for b. So again, if you want more examples of this, please go back to the last lesson because that does um, talk about or provide more examples of this idea. So when we plug all those values in, we have 15 for y, we have 2 for the m, and we have 11 for x. So all these values get plugged in, m and an x and a y. And now I'm going through and solving. I'm going to simplify some stuff first. I'm going to do 2 times 11 and get 22. And now I'm down to a one-step equation. I want to get b by itself, so I have to get rid of the 22 by subtracting 22. Do the same thing to both sides and I'm left with negative 7 equals b. So now I have my b value. And that's the end of the second step, because now we've solved for our b value. The third step is basically writing the equation in the form y equals mx plus b. We know our m value equals 2. We got that from our first step. We know our b equals negative 7 because we got that from um, 
our second step and our third step is just to put both of those pieces together so therefore y equals 2x minus 7 and that is our equation of a line that passes through the points 1 negative 5 and 11 15 so now what we're going to do is go through those steps again with some different examples so example 2 determine the equation of a line that passes through the points 419 and 1242 so the first thing we want to do is put them into a table again remember x y x y I'm gonna have my point 1 and point 2 so we have 419 then we have 12 42. Let me just move them over. Now we can find the slope in two ways. We've talked about the change in y and the change in x. So from going to 19 to 42, again, this is a little bit more difficult to figure out because the numbers are far apart. But I could do 42 minus 19. 4 to 12 is a little bit easier, but if you're still not quite sure, you could do 12 minus 4. And this is where our slope formula comes into play. So we know m is change in y over change in x. The new formula that we just talked about was y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I can plug in the points or the values. The y2 comes from my point 2, so 42 minus 19 over x2 or 12 minus x1 or 4. Can sim and this simplifies to 23 over 8. So not a, not a, not a nice number, but we've uh, reduced it, um, or it's reduced as much as possible. We've done our calculation. Even if we did the other way, the change in y and the change in x, we would still get the same thing. To find our B value, we need to sub M equals 23 over 8 and a point. In this case, let's choose the first one, the 4 and 19, just because they're smaller numbers. And we're going to sub those into Y equals MX plus B and that's going to help us solve. So y equals mx plus b. I'm going to sub in all my values that I'm given. The y value is 19 from the point. The m value we found was 23 over 8 and the x value was 4 and the b value is unknown. As we go through, we can simplify, so 19 stays the same. 23 over 8 times 4, or 4 over 1, becomes 92 over 8, plus B. I want to get B by itself, so I have to minus 92 over 8, minus, and minus it from the other side as well. I'm going, I want to keep things balanced. Um, so that's why I do it to the other side. I'm going to keep it as fractions only because it, it doesn't necessarily um, divide into a nice number. It will cancel out on one side. And we're left with 19 over 1 minus 92 over 8 equals B. So now I just need to solve this calculation to get my value for B. 19 over 1, I need to get it to equivalent fractions with the same denominator, so 152 over 8, or multiply everything by 8, minus 92 over 8 equals B, and we're left with 60 over 8 equals B. And if we want to simplify this, we can reduce it to lowest terms and we get 15 
over 2 equals b, or 7.5. Now that I have all my pieces, I have my m value of 2, 23 over 8. I have my reduced b value of 15 over 2. I can put all of this together. So therefore, y equals 23 over 8 x plus 15 over 2. And that is my equation of a line that passes through 4, 19, and 12, 42. Example 3, same idea again. We're given two points, and we want to find the equation of a line that passes through those points. So same idea. Put it into a table of values to help organize. So negative 1 over 2, 3 over 10. Again, we could look for the change in y and the change in x. Or we're going to stick to the algebraic method just for this note, just to provide one another tool for you to use. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Remember, you can label your points whatever you want. I'm just going to label the first one point 0.1, the second one point 0.2. So the y value of the second point, 10, minus the other y value, 2, over 3, the x value of the second point, minus the other x value, so minus negative 1. We get 8 over 4, which we can reduce to m equals 2. So. Now I have an m value is equal to 2, so my next step, I know m equals 2, and I have a point, let's use positive numbers, so 3, 10, my x and my y. I'm going to plug all of that into the general form y equals mx plus b, and solve for b. So 10 equals 2 times 3 plus b. I'm going to simplify this multiplication, so 10 equals 6 plus b. This one you can almost do in your head if you needed to, but algebraically, minus 6 from both sides. One side cancels out, and you're left with 4 equals b. So a little bit easier than the last one, not too many fractions to worry about. But we found our b value, we found our m value. So therefore, the equation of a line that passes through those two points is y equals 2x plus 4. So again, all we need to fill in is our m and our b value, because the x and the y are general uh, placeholders for any point on the line. Our last example is going to be a word problem. So again, from the word problem, we want to read it carefully highlight or underline any important things um, and if you have to reread it again so a rain barrel full of water is drained at a constant rate the constant rate is important because that means we should be dealing with something linear because linear was that constant change the volume of water left in the barrel after two minutes is 70 liters so that's important after five minutes there is 25 liters remaining. Write an equation to compare the amount of water left in the barrel over time. So in this case, again, we do want to create a table of values to help us come up with our points. We know they're going to be using x and y, but because it's a word scenario, they may not be called x and y. So this is where we kind of have to come up with a dependency statement, which we should be familiar with when we looked at word scenarios. So we're dealing with the amount of water left and time. So those are our two variables, but which one is independent and which one is dependent? So if we think about the dependency, dependency statement, we should come up with the amount of water depends on the time. 
So because the amount of water depends on the time, it's dependent. So that's my y value. So y is the amount of water. x, the independent, is going to be my time. I should have two points from this. And I should see I'm given two sentences that do contain numbers. So the first one is 2 minutes and 70 liters. So that's one point, 270. The next one is 5 minutes and 25 liters. So time of 5, amount of water is 25 liters. So there's my table of values. One thing you may also consider doing is coming up with a graph or sketch a graph of your points. So if I roughly sketch my graph, time is the x-axis, water is the y-axis, and if I roughly plot my points on this graph, say 2, 2 and 70, so let's say it's about here, and we have 5 and 25, so again, not to scale, but we're just roughly placing them where they are, just to get a visual. So there are my two points. Now, why are we looking for this? Well, one of two reasons, or basically the main reason is, it helps me try to understand what I'm looking at, and it gives me some indicators of what values my slope and y-intercept should be. So looking at this, I can tell that the way the points are, that my line is probably going down and to the right. And that indicates a negative slope. So we should be looking for a negative slope. The other thing that we may want to look for, and actually let me just keep everything color coded. So slope, you use always in red. The other thing we should be looking for is that B value that y-intercept. Based on my rough sketch, the b value should be higher than my first point. So that means my y-intercept should be greater than 70, or the y value of the other point. So that is, again, just some key things that we should be looking for as we go through and solve this problem. So the first thing we want to do is find that change in y and change in x. Again, we're sticking to the algebraic method for this example, so we do want to know what our point, what first point and second point are. Again, if you're comfortable just doing the change in y and change in x from the table of values, you're more than welcome to, but I'm just going to go through examples of the formal method. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Our y2 from our table is 25, our y1 is 70, our x2 is 5, and our x1 is 2. If I simplify, I get negative 45 over 3, and I can simplify that to negative 15, and again, the y value refers to liters, or water remaining, and the time is minutes, so we're looking at liters per minute. And we can even get that from the way it's laid out. Liters is on top, divided by minutes, so liters per minute. So we're losing 15 liters per minute, or we're decreasing 15 liters per minute. So that was our first step. Our second step is the y-intercept. So we know m equals negative 15. We're going to use a point. Let's use 2 and 70 our x and our y, again smaller values, easier numbers to work with. So we have the general equation y equals mx plus b. Let's plug in all of these values. So y is 70 equals negative 15 times 2 plus b. Negative 70 stays the same. Negative 15 times 2 is negative 30 plus b. I want to cancel out the minus 30 by adding 30. Do the same thing to both sides. One side cancels out, 
and I'm left with 100 equals B. So we have our two values now, and if we go back up and we look at our estimations, we should see a negative slope. We do have a negative slope. Our y-intercept should be greater than 70. It is. It's 100. So our predictions did kind of ring true, and our algebra proved that. So therefore, our equation for this scenario will be y equals negative 15x plus 100. Or if you wanted to write this as a scenario, you could say we start at 100 or a rain barrel starts at 100 liters and it loses 15 liters every minute. So example 5 is the same idea. So go through, um, so try to do this one on your own. Um, go through an example. Um, I'll pause my recording on my end. Um, so I want you to pause and then we'll come back with the full solution. So through the power of pausing and editing, <coughs> this is what you should have come up with to get the equation of, of a line that represents this scenario. So we can see it down in the bottom corner. Um, we should get the equation of y equals 1.75x plus 15. We got that from figuring out the dependency statement. Number of rides depends on money. We plugged our two values, 29 and or, sorry, 8 rides and $29, 26 rides and $60.50 into that table of values. We used algebra to find our change in y and change in x. And when we broke it down, we found that it was $1.75 per ride. We used that slope in part 2 plus one of the points to sub into the equation and solve for B. So we found that B was 15, or there was an initial or entry fee of $15. And that helped us come up with the equations. Now, we're not completely done. I just kind of covered what we should have been able to do based on the previous um, previous examples. But the question asks, what is the maximum number of rides Mike can go on? So what we need to do is use this equation to help us answer this question. It does say Mike has $45 to spend as well. So what we're going to do is something similar to what we've done before of plugging points in. So we know, basically, if we were looking at a point, x and y, we know the y value is 45, the x value we don't know. So we need to plug or sub y equals 45 into the equation to solve for x, and that will tell us how many rides. So y equals 1.75x plus 15 y we know is 45 and now I want to solve for x so I'm going to minus 15 from both sides and get 30 equals 1.75x so basically when we subtract the entrance fee he spent $30 on rides or he has $30 to spend on rides so we're going to divide that by 1.75. All right, let me color coordinate. Divide by 1.75. Do it to both sides. One side cancels out. And we are left with 17.14 plus a few other decimals equals x. So here, this means that therefore, he has, or he, no, sorry, not he has, he can go on 17 rides. And the key thing here is we always want to round down in this type of scenario because if we round up, he's not going to have enough money to get that extra bit, right? He, if we round down, 
We, we know for sure he can go on 17 rides and you has have a little bit of money left over. So you have to be careful when you read the question um, to make sure that you, you're clear on what you're saying by, by rounding up or down. But then this last part here satisfies our full question and we use the formal method to come up with the equation. So again, the formal method isn't the only way to come up with the equation, um, but it's a surefire guaranteed way to get the equation. Um, I'd say the only difference is you may use different methods to find the slope or the multiplier or the m value. Um, the b value though uh, is pretty much the same regardless. You have to plug those values in and solve for b. Um, unless you're given a graph or you can work your way back nicely to the zero the x equals zero value but again this kind of covers coming up with the equation of a line we're given two points